So, in our last lecture, we looked at uh, the concept of a dense set, and so we said that the set of rational numbers is dense on the real line, and then any any real number can be approximated using a rational number with an arbitrary degree of accuracy. So, that is uh, one of the key result which helps us in computing. We can represent uh, a real number using a rational number and carry out the calculations, carry out approximate calculations, not exact calculations. In the same way, the set of polynomials is dense in the set of continuous functions over a uh, interval a to b. Now, this is a this is a uh, cornerstone result called Weierstrass theorem and uh, Weierstrass theorem asserts that any function, any continuous function over an interval a b can be approximated by a polynomial with arbitrary degree of accuracy, a very, very important result. Now, as I explained in my last lecture, this is an existence result, it just, it just guarantees that there exists a polynomial which is a very good approximation of a given continuous function, it does not tell you how to construct this approximation. Okay? So, it is an existence result, does not tell you how to construct approximations, but this basic idea that a continuous function can be approximated by a polynomial function forms the foundation of uh, many, many, many of the numerical methods. Well, what does it, where is it used for? It is used for transforming the problem into a computable form. So, polynomial approximations are going to be our, so polynomial approximations are going to be the core of next few lectures. We are going to look at different ways of doing polynomial approximations. The first one is Taylor series approximation. The second one we will look at interpolation. Well, and the third one is least square approximations. Well, by and large, we will we'll stick to polynomial approximations, but we would also, we will also look at function approximations in between and so on. So, these three basic ideas uh, or these three basic tools give us a way of constructing this polynomial approximations. So, Weierstrass theorem only gives you existence. Actually, how do you construct these polynomial approximations will be done through uh, these three approaches. Now, let us begin with Taylor series approximation. Let us begin our uh, journey with Taylor series approximations. Now, Taylor series approximation, if I am given a continuous function, say I have some f x which belongs to set of continuous functions over a b. Okay, and that means x x is the independent variable which varies between a and b. Okay, now Taylor series approximation allows me to construct a polynomial approximation with certain nice properties. Now, what is this nice property? Let's say this let's say this Pn x is the local approximation with alpha 0 plus alpha 1 x minus x bar plus alpha 2 x minus x bar square up to alpha n. Well, it is not, it is not, uh, we cannot just look at the functions when you are doing Taylor series approximations. You cannot just talk about continuous functions, you need something more, you need differentiability. Okay. So, we have to look at functions which are not just once differentiable, which are n plus 1 times differentiable. So, actually I have to work with a space not C, 
I have to work with C n plus 1, I have to work with C n plus 1 a b which means set of functions which are n plus 1 times differentiable over interval a b ok and x bar, x bar is some point that belongs to interval a b, x bar is some point. So, in neighborhood of a point x bar that belongs to a b, ok, we want to construct an approximation, a polynomial approximation which is for f, ok. Now, what is the characteristic of this approximation? The characteristic of this approximation is that the derivatives see the nice thing about this polynomial approximation is that derivatives of this polynomial are same as derivative of this function at x equal to x bar ok at x equal to x at x equal to x bar this polynomial approximation and the original function have identical derivatives. How many identical derivatives? N identical derivatives. Okay, N identical derivatives. Now, using this condition, it is very easy to derive what is alpha 0, alpha 1, alpha 2. If you start uh, differentiating Pn, okay, if you start differentiating Pn, you will get different. So, for 0th order derivative which means p n x bar is equal to f of x bar for for k equal to 0. So, the first coefficient p n x bar that is equal to alpha 0. So, the first coefficient turns out to be this. Okay. The second coefficient you just differentiate and then, so what is the second condition? The second condition is that d p n by d x at x equal to x bar should be equal to d f by d x at x equal to x bar. Notation that we have is f of x bar by d x. We are calling this as f of x bar by d x. Okay. So, very easy to show that alpha 1 is equal to d f x bar. This is just a notation saying that the derivative evaluated at x equal to x bar. Okay. So, likewise, likewise I can go on differentiating and it is very easy to show that uh, is this clear? What will be the first derivative? See the first derivative of this will be alpha 1 plus 2 times right and just equate it to the derivative here the kth derivative that will give you uh, that will give you the corresponding term ok. So, likewise it is very easy to derive that alpha k is equal to 1 by k factorial ok. It is very easy to derive this. I leave the derivation to you. It is very very easy. You just go on differentiating substitute x equal to x bar ok and equate right hand side equal to left hand side. You have imposed the condition that we have the derivatives of the polynomial approximation and derivatives of the original function should be identical. If you just impose that condition, okay, uh, very very simple way to derive, very simple uh, derivation to arrive at this general condition that for this particular polynomial, any kth, any kth coefficient is actually given by one by k factorial d f k by uh, d uh, x k. So that is kth derivative of f at x equal to x bar. Okay, so I can write, I can express a given polynomial in terms of a, a, a given function 
in terms of a polynomial okay whose coefficients are local derivatives coefficients are local derivatives so this this polynomial it turns out to be this p and x it turns out to be f at x bar plus uh, df so 1 by 2 factorial and so on so 1 by n factorial okay so this this you can prove very very easily if you just equate the derivatives if you impose the condition that uh, the derivative of uh, the approximation and derivative of the function at x equal to x bar should be identical you will you will get this uh, yeah yeah good question she is asking why should it be n plus 1 times differentiable I have to now write f of x in terms of two components. Okay, uh, so Taylor's theorem actually allows me to uh, do two things. One is it quantifies uh, this polynomial. It allows me to construct this polynomial locally, and then it also allows me to talk about the error, the residual. Okay, so we are now going to say that actually f of x. So let us define this Rn which is let me define a residual this Rn is a notation okay let me define a residual which is function of x bar and x minus x bar okay which is difference between f of x original function and the approximation okay now what Taylor's theorem tell, uh, tells you is so according to Taylor theorem Rn 1 upon n plus 1 factorial so actually I can write f of x f of x as Pn x plus Rn x. So this is exact expression. This is exact expression. So this this derivative, n plus one derivative, is not evaluated at x equal to x bar. It's evaluated at some intermediate point. At some intermediate point between uh, x x bar plus uh, lambda times delta x, where lambda is uh, a fractional value between zero to one. Okay. So actually, derivation for this is through Rolle's theorem. And using mean value theorem, you can actually show that uh, there exist. Using mean value theorem, you can show that there exist some value of lambda for which you will get exact equality. And then that's how you actually prove this. But I'm not really interested right now in proving this. We're just going to use this result. So n plus one derivative is required to define the residual term. Okay, and this is an exact expression. Remember, remember that. This is an exact expression. So f of x exactly equal to this approximation plus the residual, where the residual is defined by n plus one derivative. That's why we need n plus one times differentiable functions. Okay. Now this this is something which you have studied in your undergraduate. We'll see how we'll be using this subsequently when it comes to finite difference method of solving ODE boundary value problems or partial differential equations but before that I want to introduce a multivariable version of this this is right now one scalar value x what if you have a function in multiple variables x1 x2 x3 x4 x5 and xn okay so what I am going to do now is to define a multivariable Taylor series okay which will conceptually be same same concept is there that is you diff, you come up with an approximation whose higher derivatives are matched with the higher derivatives of the function same idea okay except now we will start working with uh, 
a function or a function vector in multiple variables and then uh, and where is it used I will also immediately derive one uh, well known result for uh, solving nonlinear algebraic equations that is Newton's method using the multivariable Taylor series. So, Taylor series is not just defined for uh, now let us say I have a function f of x where which is from R n to R n ok here x belongs to R n ok x belongs to R n uh, and I have a, a vector of functions ok. So, f of x is actually ok it is a this f this small f is a scalar function from n to 1 and then this is a vector of function. So, there are n such functions there are n such functions ok. Example if you want an example in the computing tutorial we are looking at 4 equations related to a CSTR in 4 unknowns right each one of them can be written as f 1 x f 2 x f 3 x f 4 x there are 4 equations in 4 unknowns ok. In general if you are trying to solve uh, energy and material balance that is associated with some section of a chemical plant you will get you know 1000 equations in 1000 unknowns ok. So, you will have a vector of functions now can I extend the ideas of Taylor series approximation to these kind of function vectors ok. So, that is going to be critical for us in this course. Well, typically we use first or at the most we use second derivatives we do not really get into higher derivatives, but first and second derivatives of these function vectors they prove to be very very useful in developing lot of methods ok. So, what I am going to say now here is that just like the scalar case I can write f of x as p n x plus r n x ok. Now, this is a polynomial, but this is a multi dimensional polynomial this is not one variable polynomial ok. This is a multi dimensional polynomial ok. How do you how do you construct this? Well, we still have the same condition that is d k p n at x bar. So, kth derivative kth derivative of this approximation ok should be matched with you know function derivative at that point. So, this should be equal to d k f x bar this is still the condition ok for k is equal to 0 1 2 n and what is my residual now ok. Let me let me first write down the uh, function expansion. So, p n x if I actually do a derivation here of matching the derivatives and then finding out the coefficients of p n I will finally I am just writing the final result because intermediate steps are very very straightforward would be f of x bar plus. So, this is the first coefficient of my polynomial ok. Second coefficient is dou f by dou x well computed at x bar ok. Now, remember f of x is a vector ok. What will be dou f by dou x? It will be a matrix this will be a n cross n matrix evaluated at a particular point. So, this is a constant matrix 
once you evaluate it at particular point it is a constant matrix ok. So, this into x minus x bar. So, this is a n cross 1 vector ok. Then well the next term would be 1 by 2 factorial dou 2 f dou x square. Well, I am writing it in a little different way because this is a tensor. This is a tensor. This will be an n cross n. This will be n cross n cross n. Okay. When x minus x bar operate it operates on this once, you will get a matrix. When this operates twice, you will get a vector. Okay. So, this is a this is sometimes in uh, maths it is called as a bilinear matrix, it is called bilinear matrix, but this is a tensor, this is a n cross n cross n tuple. Then you know you will have plus 1 upon n factorial uh, dou n f x bar by dou x n. So, this is a this is a tensor which is n cross n cross n cross n n times and then you know delta x operates on it n times to give me a vector ok. So, actually in practice in most of the numerical methods we will be working with this first first derivative ok. In some cases in a, in a situation uh, some situations we may go to the second derivative beyond that it becomes very very difficult to use Telesity approximation. Nevertheless, the first derivative is uh, very very useful as you will see that we will derive one very important method using this. And what is the uh, residual? The residual term here is, I will just write it down here, the residual here is 1 upon n plus 1 factorial Okay. So, this is n plus 1th derivative evaluated at some point at some point where x bar plus lambda delta x delta x is x minus x bar where lambda is some value between 0 to 1. So, this is exact expression if you write polynomial approximation plus plus uh, the residual so, the, the together they form the exact expression. Okay. So, this is for function vectors which are n plus 1 times differentiable ok, n plus 1 times differentiable. Now, function vector and its first derivative Jacobian you have been calculating for the Newton Raphson method ok and the first thing I am going to do is to derive Newton Raphson method starting from this Taylor approximation as an application of Taylor approximation before I move into solving partial differential equations or boundary value problems. I want to show that this uh, complex expression for n, n functions written as a function vector is actually useful. It is the, the practical application of this going to be uh, developing method for solving nonlinear algebraic equations simultaneously. Okay. Is there any doubt till now? Anyone? This is just an extension, yeah. Yeah, see because dou f by dou x, let us let us take uh, let us take an example. No, let us take uh, let us take a simple example. So, okay, I have given one example here. My f of x is let us say. Uh, x1 square plus x2 square minus 2 x1 x2 and my second example is my second function is x1 x2 e to the power minus x1 plus x2. This is my function vector 
it is a function of two variables. It is a function of two variables. So, it is a function vector of two variables. This is the first function, this is the second function. Okay. What will be the Jacobian? So, what is dou f by dou x? So, this will be whatever it will be uh, 2 x 1 minus 2 x 2, 2 x 2 minus 2 x 1 and whatever here will be 2 quantities here. Okay. Now, what is second derivative? What is the derivative of this? I have to differentiate 4 entities. So, you have to differentiate now to come up with a higher derivative. Yeah, this will be something, this will be what? This will be uh, x2 e to the power minus x1 plus x2 plus something, right? Plus there will be some, some, some term here likewise. Okay. Now, I want to differentiate this once more. What will I get? So, this is a matrix, matrix differentiated with respect to a vector. Okay. So, dou by dou x of dou f by dou x, this will give me, see this is a n cross n, this is a vector which is n cross 1. So, if I differentiate this, I will get n cross n cross n, right? I mean simplest thing is uh, dou f by dou x. So, I can write you know see dou f by dou x and dou by dou x1 of this will give me will give me one matrix and then dou by dou x2 of dou f by dou x will give me another matrix. So, it will be n cross 2 cross 2 cross 2 right and so on. So, you go to the third derivative, it will be n cross n cross n cross n. Okay. So, it will just go on. Okay. So, yeah. How do I operate? Uh, huh, so, there are there are rules of operating this. You know, the way you differentiate, there are different ways of writing this bilinear matrix. So, depending upon how you write it, you can develop the rules for multiplication. So, well, I can tell you a reference for where this is done if you want, if you are interested. But uh, during the course, we are not going to require the second derivatives. But you, you need them if you want to develop some advanced methods. So, if you are interested, I can tell you references where. But basically, what happens here is that this is a this is a three-dimensional array. Okay. Once you operate x minus x bar on it, you will get a matrix. You operate you operate x minus x bar on that matrix, you will get a vector. See, because ultimately you should get a vector here. This is a vector function vector. So, multiplication of this should give me a vector. Okay. Yeah, you can decide some way of writing, you know. I can write this. I can write this as n cross n matrix, then n cross n matrix like this. I can if I want to. I can partition it into actually, but it will not be a even if it looks like a matrix, it is not a matrix because there are partitions. This is like a 3D array. Up to 4D you can represent on paper by somehow. And any any you know four dimensional, five dimensional in MATLAB or in uh, computer you can represent array of any dimension. Okay, let us not worry too much about uh, higher derivatives of function vector, what we, we are going to need most is the first derivative that is Jacobian. This Jacobian is most important for us in the course. Okay, so, where is the application? Where do I need this? So, I am moving to section uh, in terms of notes, I am moving to section 3.4. So, I want to derive this Newton's method. I want to derive Newton's method as an application of Taylor series approximation. Okay. I want to derive Newton's method as application of Taylor's approximation. Now, let us look at this problem. Let us look at this problem f of x. There are two functions in this function vector. 
okay let's say i want to solve for this equal to 0 i want to solve this equal to 0 and this equal to 0 i want to simultaneously solve these two equations okay you will get umpteen number of situ situations where you have to solve uh, n nonlinear equations in n variables simultaneously and get a solution now if you have done the computing assignment the demo the first demo okay you would have noticed that there are two equations okay what do you mean by there are two equations and so if i draw a graph of these two equations in x y x2 plane we want to find out the points where these two, two you know t, these two graphs intersect okay when it is line if the if these two were linear equations if these two were lines and in two dimensions they meet only in one point if at all they meet or they could be parallel there are two scenarios okay but for a nonlinear equation it is not like that nonlinear equation it could meet at multiple points so there could be multiple solutions for this particular problem okay there is no unique solution when it is coming when it comes to solving uh, nonlinear algebraic equations simultaneously we want to develop a numerical method to reach a solution and i am going to use the idea of taylor series approximation to arrive at this method okay so now my problem is that i want to solve for f of x f i x is equal to 0 i is equal to 1 2 n simplest example i have shown is here so i want to solve for and x belongs to rn okay or in other words i want to solve for f1 x f2 x is equal to 0 0 i want to solve this problem i want to solve n nonlinear algebraic equations which are coupled i want to solve them simultaneously okay now how am i going to use taylor series approximation now what we know from taylor's theorem for the multivariable case okay what i know from taylor's theorem is f of x is equal to f x bar what i know from taylor theorem is i can expand f of x in neighborhood of some x equal to x bar in the neighborhood of x equal to x bar okay i can i can express it like this okay if i am if i am very very close if my x is very close to x bar okay i can actually ignore the higher order terms i can ignore the second order and higher order terms okay for small now what is small here is in quotes i am not going to precisely define what is small here if x minus x bar is small i can write f x is equal to f x bar plus dou f by dou x at x equal to x bar into x minus x bar everyone with me on this this is an approximation this is not equal to this is not equal to i am saying that this is this f of x for small if x minus x bar is small i can ignore the higher order terms in the polynomial expansion and then i can say that f of x is almost equal to this for small small perturbation around x bar x bar is some point okay what is it that i wanted to solve i wanted to solve 
let me go back here i want to solve this equal to 0 or in the vector notation which is nothing but f of x equal to 0 i want to solve f of x equal to 0 okay i am not able to solve this analytically f of x equal to 0 i am trying to come up with some way of you know doing it iteratively so i want to solve this okay but i am not able to solve this so i have approximated my original problem i was talking about problem approximation discretization okay i use taylor series approximation and instead of solving for f of x equal to 0 which is the original problem i solve this equal to 0 i solve for this equal to 0 okay is this solvable why this is solvable because this second derivative is calculated at x equal to x bar so this is a matrix which is once you calculate it at one particular point this is a fixed matrix okay what is this function vector evaluated at x equal to x bar so this is the n cross 1 vector this is a matrix which gets fixed once you evaluate it at x equal to x bar okay then this approximation is a linear equation it is no longer a nonlinear equation approximation can be solved very easily okay so if i decide to solve this equation in place of my original equation in place of my original equation i decide to solve this equation okay so what happens you know i get a solution i get a solution x minus x bar is equal to this is just a linear equation minus do f by do x bar let me write in a very naive way inverse of this matrix okay into f of x minus f of x bar this is a n cross 1 vector this is a n cross n matrix this problem is easily solvable okay and i get a new point x is equal to x bar so let me call this quantity as delta x then i can write x is equal to x bar plus delta x okay if it will rarely happen that this new x which you get here you started from x bar what you have done is like this let's let's try to understand i took a point x bar let's say this is my guess solution okay this is my guess solution i don't know what is the exact solution i'm guessing a solution i'm calling it x bar hopefully this is close to the true solution okay i should give a good guess when i give a guess here so my x bar is a good guess okay my x bar is a good guess so then around x bar i linearized my original equation i i approximated as a linear as a linear equation okay or a first order polynomial in n dimensions to be very precise a first order polynomial in n dimensions we have ignored square terms cubic terms all nth order terms we just concentrated on the first derivative okay instead of solving the original problem we solved this simplified problem okay and then this gave me a possible solution x which is this okay so i use this this idea to come up with iterative scheme okay which is newton's method or sometimes called newton raphson method so newton's method is basically now these two steps how do i use it to come up with a iteration scheme let let my x0 denote initial gauge solution and then i am going to use newton's step to come up with a iteration scheme which is like this i will call this as delta xk is equal to minus do f by do x 
इनवर्स एफ ऑफ एक्स के एक्स के प्लस वन इज इक्वल टू एक्स के प्लस डेल्टा एक्स के माई रॉ न्यूटन स्कीम इज सिंपली करेक्शन हाउ वॉज द करेक्शन अपटेंड यूजिंग लीनियराइजेशन यूजिंग लीनियराइजेशन इन द नेबरहुड ऑफ विच पॉइंट द प्रीवियस पॉइंट ओके आई स्टार्ट विद गेस एक्स जीरो I linearize my non-linear equations locally. Solve the linearized problem. Get delta x k. Okay, and then this delta x k is used to create the new guess. Okay, from x zero I will get x one. See x zero plus delta x zero will give me x one. Okay, then I use x one. Do the same thing. I get x two. I get x3, I get x4. So I get a sequence of vectors. I get a sequence of vectors. So there are multiple things being discussed here. First, original problem is being approximated or is being discretized using Taylor series approximation. We are not able to solve the original problem exactly. We are simplifying and solving a simplified problem. Understand this? Okay. What we know very well is how to do a x equal to b. Actually, this is nothing but a x equal to b. Okay. Actually, uh, maybe I should write this not as an inverse. I should write this problem as do f by do x k delta x k is equal to minus f. this is a matrix this is a n cross n matrix this is a n cross 1 vector this is a n cross 1 vector this is nothing but a x equal to b in abstract form this is nothing but a x equal to b solving linear algebraic equation something which we know very well okay we know how to solve linear algebraic equation so i am solving a x equal to b okay and then the delta x which i get here is added to xk to create a new guess and then i continue this very very important if you want to get a good convergence initial guess is very very important that's where my input as a engineer or a physicist or a scientist will come into picture i should know what values i mean if if i have a pressure or concentration or uh, say mole fraction between 0 to 1 i cannot give a guess point you know 1.5 Or minus point five, so physics comes there. Initial guess is very very important. If there are multiple solutions, you know it may happen that if you give a guess close to one solution, iterations will go to that solution. If you give a guess close to another solution, iterations will go to that solution. Now the question is, is this sequence Cauchy? Is this sequence converging? Okay. So what do I do here? Is I look at, I look at. x k plus one minus x k norm of this. Well, it is many times because of numerical problems. It is many times risky to look at only this difference. We should normalize it. So it's good to look at. This is used for normalization. Okay, I would want to know whether this is less than or equal to epsilon. If this is less than or equal to epsilon, I terminate my iterations. Otherwise, I just keep doing this. I start with an x naught initial guess. I keep doing these steps. So, original problem, which is solving nonlinear algebraic equations, is converted into sequence of linear algebraic equations. I am solving linear algebraic equations again and again, hoping that this sequence will lead to solution of the original problem. So, we need to check whether we are going there. so we need one more convergence criteria and that is we need to check whether norm f of if this is less than epsilon 2 well ultimately why am i doing all this i want to solve f of x equal to 0 will i ever get 0 exactly 
in the computer i will never get zero i have to give some some epsilon to be some small value this would be you know like 10 to the power minus 10 or something some very very small value so i want to say that do this iterations till you know any one of these conditions is satisfied that means doing more iterations is not helping me i am just at the same point okay i am at the same point if this goes this goes close to zero then you know i am doing iterations and i am at the same point the same thing is here if i am doing iterations and if this has gone become sufficiently small i can stop okay so this is the newton's method which was which is developed by using multi dimensional polynomial approximation what kind of approximation taylor series approximation okay and this is something which will be using again and again and you also have done programming you started doing programming for this right so you will get more insight into what is this see now it will become clear where is a where is the sequence of why do you have to worry about you know some sequence converging well when i start doing these iterations i start from x0 you know i continue doing this till i get convergence of what the sequence of vectors each one of you if i give you the same problem each one of you might start from a different initial guess each one of you will get a different sequence of vectors okay i have to worry about whether there is a convergence whether the you know the sequence converges to the solution to a solution and and so on okay so this is where this is where so today what we have looked at is one application of taylor series yeah well there are numerical difficulties if you don't normalize see sometimes you know your x is a vector which itself has very small quantities okay it may have you know mole fractions which are 10 to the power minus you know minus 3 minus 4 and then the difference will look small but actually it is not small so you should look at relative error relative error is always better than uh, so that is that is why we look at relative error okay so next class will will start looking at other applications of taylor series approximations in solving problems